Hello everyone, welcome back to another video and in this video we're going to talk about everything Masters of Computer Science. So my name is Sajid Purwal and I'm a Masters of Computer Science student over here at Northeastern University. So let's start the video without any further ado. So first topic we're going to cover is how my profile was like before I applied to these universities. So my profile goes as this. My GPA was 8.4. I had scored a 325 in GRE, 169 in Quant and a 156 in Verbal. Then I had 112 out of 120 in TOEFL and you can probably see the score breakup on the screen right now. And also I had completed one entire internship before I applied to these universities. Now this was how a short gist of my profile looks like. Obviously I did a lot more things to improve my profile. If you want to know what are the other things that I did to improve my profile and what my profile was like completely. You can probably check out this short two minute video in which I go in detail about my entire profile before I applied to universities and I'll link it down in the description below for you to check out. Now let me talk about my admits and rejects. So I had three admits and seven rejects. That means I applied to 10 universities in total. The admits that I had were from Northeastern University, Arizona State University and University of California Riverside. And I also had seven rejects and you can probably see them on the screen right now. The reason why I selected Northeastern University is because Northeastern University gives you plenty of opportunities plus the great co-op program really helped me a lot. So what is it that you guys can do to improve your profile to get great admits too? First of all, try to get some internship experience if you are a complete fresher, that is you came straight out of college like I did. If you do not have any work experience, obviously getting admits becomes a lot more difficult. So obviously you'll have to do a lot many things to counterbalance that part. So try to get as high GPA as possible during university. No matter how much anyone tells you that your GPA does not matter, it does. It does a lot. And you will get to know that only while you're applying to universities and getting admits or rejects. So have a GPA as high as possible. Then aim to get as high a GRE and TOEFL score as possible, all right? These three things will actually help you a lot. On top of that, get, try to get some internship experience if you do not have any. Before applying to universities, obviously they'll check how much have you worked in the field to get an understanding of how much you're aware of the different concepts that, that you have learned during your education, right? So if you're a fresher, you want to come straight out after college and you're applying right there and then, then obviously you need to have some internship experience to let the university people know that obviously you were interested in the field and that's why you pursued those interests and tried to get some hands-on experience. And people who have work experience, I don't think I need to tell you anything about that because you already have some work experience under your belt and that will act as an advantage. Now, do you need to have some programming experience in the field? Now again, let's divide this part into two parts, for freshers and for experienced people. For freshers, I would say you do not need to be experts in coding. You do not need to know it all. Probably I did not too. So what did I do? I tried to develop as many projects as possible and tried to gain as much internship experience as possible before I applied to these universities. So that they know that I like to get my hands dirty with the stuff I like and I'm not afraid to experiment with the stuff, even though I'm a newbie to the field. So I completed a lot of technical projects. I did an internship and that actually helped me a lot. So try doing that please. And now for the people who have work experience, you guys are already experienced in the field. That will obviously help you when you put that on your resume. So all you have to do is try making some technical projects in the domains that you're interested in. For example, you're interested in both fields, software engineering and data science. You can probably make projects in both of them. This goes to show that you're obviously interested in your field, you're interested in these domains and you have put in the work to actually make things happen. So that also goes to show how much your interest is in the field. But for all the freshers, after you get your admit or after you apply to these universities, start coding seriously and start making good technical projects really advanced ones and that will actually help you out in the long run. Now I'll provide you with a small list of universities based on your profile which you can probably use to apply to them. Alright, so let's start from the beginning. So for people with high level profiles, I would suggest applying to universities like UIUC, CMU, University of California, San Diego, Georgia Tech and other Ivy Leagues. For people who have a moderate level profile, I would suggest applying to SJSU, that is San Jose State University, Northeastern University, Arizona State University, 
and University of Illinois, Chicago. Another GPA-centric university that I really like is University of Southern California. Only apply to this university if you have a GPA of around 9, otherwise there's a high chance you might get rejected. Now, let's talk about some people who have average profiles. You can probably go for universities like San Diego State University, Arlington, and there are also many good California State Universities which you can apply to, alright? Again, this is not a list that you have to stick to. Try to make your own mix of universities that you want to apply to, but you can use this as a small reference, alright? And try to apply to such universities which are in good locations that gets you more job opportunities. One of the main reasons why I came to Northeastern University was that it was in Boston and that gave me a good amount of job opportunities to apply to, alright? And you can also try for universities which are in California because again, it's a great place for computer science people. Now, what computer science really is and what is the coursework like over here during your masters? Now, computer science is a vast field. It has various disciplines like software engineering, data science, machine learning, cyber security and others. It's a field which you can experiment a lot with and you can learn a lot from and you can choose whichever discipline you want to go for. So now let's talk about some of the coursework that I did during my masters in computer science. So the first two subjects I had in my first semester were programming design paradigm and database management systems. Now let's start with something. Now let's start with programming design paradigm. This course will help you a lot in understanding design patterns like adapter pattern, builder pattern, MVC pattern and others as such. This code will also help you in designing various solutions to different problems with the help of code. And this is a great course by the way. It will help you prepare for many interviews as design patterns are asked in many interviews over there and also many companies give you questions like designing an elevator system or designing a calculator. This is all done with the help of this subject program design paradigm or you can also call it object oriented design. This is also another name for the subject. It will teach you about designing code. It is extremely important to know and also extremely useful to use during interviews as the interviewer appreciates if you know how to write good code and how to design it. Another thing that PDP will teach you is how to test your code properly and how to write documentation for your code and how to write good quality code. And I promise you, once you take this subject, you will never write bad quality code. Your code will be easily differentiated by those people who have not studied this subject. Now let's move on to the subject database management systems. Now this subject was more backend heavy as it involved learning about SQL, NoSQL, writing SQL queries, advanced SQL queries, learning about SQL triggers and other things as such. Also, we learned about different backend frameworks like Spring Boot and Node.js. People who did not understand what backend is, basically the difference between frontend and backend is that frontend is basically the visual style of your application and backend is the services that you create in the back. That is where your database management systems was structured around. Now, web development taught us about various technologies on the front end like React, Angular, HTML, CSS and others. Whereas in the back end, it taught us about Node.js and Spring Boot again. Again, this is a great full stack course if you want to take it. As at the end of the course, you will have a great project to showcase on your resume and also will have a good knowledge about the full stack field. Moving on, I had the algorithms course. Now, algorithms course is generally tough in most universities. This is a lot more theoretical focused work as compared to many other subjects which are focused more on practical and coding. This will have you write lots of theories. It will have you calculating time complexities. It will have you write hypothesis and other things of such sort. And it will also have you writing code that is on a piece of paper, not coding actually. And on top of that, it will also teach you theory of some great important concepts like Red black tree, decision tree, greedy algorithms, red first search, deaf first search. So you'll obviously learn a lot about many algorithms too. So it is a great course if you are someone who wants to learn about data structures and algorithms in detail. But this will again be a more theoretically focused course as compared to many practical courses out there. So keep that in mind. And many universities have this course as a core course. A core course is one you cannot skip. You have to take it once before graduating. Now let's talk about foundations of software engineering. This subject taught me about software development life cycle and agile practices. And it also had given me one project by the end of the subject to showcase on my resume. 
On top of that, this course again introduced me to design patterns and extensive testing. Though I think, in my personal opinion, you do not really need to study this subject to learn about software development lifecycle, agile practices and such because I think after you join a company, it is very easy to do so in just a month by just basic observation. So if you can skip this subject, you can, but make sure to take program design paradigm so that you understand the design patterns and other things as such. Moving on, I had taken the subject cloud computing. Now Northeastern does cloud computing a little differently. We have different companies coming in like Akamai, IBM, Red Hat, which is a subsidiary of IBM, which um, provide us with projects. And we as students are divided in various groups and are sent to different companies to do those projects. And we have regular stand-ups with those companies in which we discuss how much work we have done so far. And this course basically introduced me to various technologies like Kubernetes, how to do things on cloud and things as such. You get the point, right? It's cloud computing. Plus it had a lot of research papers for us to read and write discussion on. For example, what did you like about this research paper? Just give a small uh, discussion about it. So we had to write that down almost every week, a new research paper would pop up. Next course was data mining techniques. Now this course is like the tip of the iceberg of data science. So if you are someone who's new and who wants to experience with data science, you can definitely take this course because it will walk you through many things and with its assignments, you'll be able to learn some basics and uh, get a good grasp of the understanding of whether data science is for you or not. So these are some of the subjects that I have studied at Northeastern till now and how most of the subjects are structured in various universities. I hope you understand a small gist of it. What kind of specializations are there in the university? Now different universities have many kinds of specializations. Like I told earlier, software engineering, data science, cyber security, whatever you want to choose. Now again, you can be flexible with your choice of subjects. You can select the subjects that you want to study. For example, let's say I'm more interested in the software engineering domain, but I also want to experiment with cyber security, data science, I can easily do so. But some universities have this requirement that you have to graduate with a particular specialization. So make sure that you have taken enough subjects in the, that particular specialization that you want to specialize in so that you can graduate with a degree. So please do not take that lightly. Make sure you contact your academic advisor and take their advice on this particular topic. So you can obviously without a worry, select different subjects, study with flexibility and choose the trajectory that you want to take with the subjects. But just make sure that you are graduating with a specialization if your university requires that. Now computer science is more focused on research or practical work. Well, there's a small trap that people generally not know about. So various universities have this particular branch category I'll talk about. So for example, let's say there's university A. It has two different departments, MSCS and MCS. All right. Now MSCS is the course which has thesis work and MCS is the one which does not have any thesis. So this is the one you want to select if you want to just aim for good opportunities after your masters. And this is the one if you want to do thesis along with it. Now, but, but for those universities which do not have any two different domains like this, you can easily go on with MSCS. It does not matter. For example, Northeastern just has MSCS. So I went for it. It did not matter for me. Whereas in Arizona State University, I had applied to MS MCS. All right. That is the without thesis program. Now, how much does work experience help in securing opportunities over here during your masters? Bottom line, work experience will help you a lot and will give you a heavy advantage over people who do not have any. Now I'll give you a short example to explain this. Let's say there's a person A. Let's say there's a person B. Now person A has three years of work experience and person B is a fresher and just has, let's say two, two months of internship experience. That's that is four months of experience. Now they go in for the same opportunity. Let's say that opportunity has only one seat remaining. That is one internship position available at this company. Now, who will you give more preference to as an interviewer? A person who has three years of experience, who will obviously be working at the same intern rate as this person would be. You will obviously be giving more preference to the person who has more work experience because he brings more knowledge to the table. He has more experience in the field. He knows how to converse in a, in a corporate environment better than this person. He knows how to deal with situations and pressure better. So obviously, the advantage will be on this person A side as compared to the person B side. But again, the person B can still get selected. How? 
he can perform way better he has to perform really really well so a fresher who is coming to the industry needs to be at the top of his game he needs to be really really skilled with what he does whether it is lead code questions or whether it is um, technical questions and stuff you should not be making a lot of mistakes during your interview because you are being judged with people who have lots of work experience who will be working at the same rate so if this person is getting 30 you are getting 30 obviously if you do not perform better than this guy i would not want to give a shot to you even though you might be more brilliant than this particular person he still looks better on paper to me so if you're not better at performing than this guy obviously you will you lose your opportunity and as for work experience people you if you perform well obviously the balls in your court and you'll be able to take that opportunity like this even while applying to companies work experience will help you a lot in getting shortlisted for interviews the main trauma that people get over here in universities is that they do not get shortlisted for opportunities and if you want to get shortlisted for opportunities you need to have a great resume all right so many times what happens is freshers come new to the environment and they apply to many opportunities out there but they do not get shortlisted for any or maybe let's say only a few like 3 to 4 job interview calls whereas a person who has experience might get as much as 10 to 15 interview calls so you are getting more opportunities and on top of that if you perform better than the average you are getting selected so i think that's a great win and that's a great advantage but for freshers do not get discouraged where there's a will there's a way i personally came as a fresher and i secured two co-ops in my first year and i had secured three internships in my second year right now for this summer so please do not be discouraged know that you can do it if you perform well in these interviews all right so make sure that you're skilled enough in the domain and you will be getting that job so your main focus should be okay even if i'm getting only three interview calls i have to crack one of them at any cost and prepare well for that and you will be able to do so it is not such a big deal just perform great and that should do it now how the job opportunities for people coming in masters of computer science now there are plenty of opportunities in the masters of computer science field but the opportunities will depend domain to domain for example if we talk about software engineering it has the most number of opportunities whereas if i talk about something like machine learning it has a few opportunities so your jo- job availability depends a lot on the domain that you're pursuing so f- i will suggest that you at least have two domains in your mind while you're applying to companies so let's say you are more interested in machine learning but let's say you are not able to get that right opportunity you should also keep applying to software engineering jobs so that you can at least back them if this does not work out for you now how did i apply for various jobs so this was my daily ritual during my masters i used to get up from my sleep and i used to sit and apply for at least one or one and a half hours to different companies on linkedin LinkedIn has many opportunities coming in each and every day and you need to stay active. You need to apply each and every day over here. It's like a mandatory things to do. On top of that, I also was using Northeastern's career portal when I got the access to it. I was also applying to companies over there and I was also applying on LinkedIn. So even if your college po- gives you a small um career portal which you can use to apply to companies, please do not stop applying on LinkedIn. That is also absolutely necessary. Also give a small amount of time every day to some competitive coding it is also really important for you to do i personally during my first year had applied to more than 600 companies over here during my masters and that is a very normal amount for anyone to do so while they're looking for opportunities so please make sure that you're going in that range maybe above 400 or 500 companies so that you get some interview calls from that because getting interview calls is really really difficult over here all right please take that seriously and you should be fine now the most important topic money that is what you all have been waiting for since a long time how much money can we make we have a lot of student loans and this and that can we enjoy it too or would we just be filling our student loans and that will be it well let me answer that question for you how much can you make depends a lot Now let's first talk about internship salaries. Your internship salary could be as low as fifteen dollars and as high as fifty dollars. In some rare cases, I've also seen people getting fifty-five dollars, sixty, sixty dollars, and seventy dollars. By the way, these rates are hourly rates. For example, forty dollars an hour, fifty dollars an hour, sixty dollars an hour, and you work for forty hours a week. So you can do the math based on how many 
months the company has employed you for all right i won't go into detail about that now about full time salaries now your full time salary for starting positions could vary from $60000 to as high as 120 or 130000 now your actual ctc or let's say your package is a lot more let's say you get employed in a big fan company you will get 110k as a base 20k as bonus and then again 15 to 20k from stocks so that makes your entire ctc to be around 150k and this is i think one of the highest for starting positions now if you're going for the position even above that that is sd level 2 or let's say a senior position your package could go even as high as 200k all that including all the bonuses um the early bonus stocks and your base so you obviously get a lot of money in computer science based on the field or the domain that you're pursuing and it also depends a lot on your location for example a person earning like 120 or 125k in california would be probably the same as earning 105 or 110k in boston because of the difference in tax rates again things depend a lot i would go much into detail about this particular topic in a later video but yeah i think you got a small gist of it right some companies which are startups which cannot afford to pay a lot of money pay as little as $60,000 to so depends where you actually go for your full time position but if i were to mark an average i would say that's around 90k to 95k so how many people actually get these internships and job opportunities i'm talking about so i would say around 75 to 80% people are able to bag internships very well the others who are not able to maybe they were not that active during the job search they were not actively applying to companies maybe they were just unlucky or maybe they were just too focused on a certain specialization many people i know were too focused on going for specialization like machine learning but they were unfortunately unable to get jobs in that field as they are very less and sometimes are taken by more experienced people all right so they were not able to back opportunities in that particular specialization and they did not apply to other software engineering opportunities too and thus they could not get any internships so this happens a lot so make sure you're applying to various domains so that um, you have a diversified way of cracking interviews from different opportunities if your particular um, choice of specialization does have does not have many opportunities in it another thing i have made a great video about how to prepare for masters in computer science opportunities over here and it will be coming out in a couple days i have already edited it and it has already been scheduled so make sure to watch that video too so that you get an understanding of how to prepare for masters in computer science and that's it for this video guys if you like this video please 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 consider subscribing because this video took a lot of research and many hours to shoot make sure to press that subscribe button and just make sure that we are connected in the future so that you guys do not miss any updates from this channel i'll be coming with more banger content for this channel and you will be enjoying it a lot so make sure to subscribe please it helps a lot thank you so much for watching and i will see you in the next one